Hello, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to have a wonderful time this morning. And so before we start, why don't we pray together? Lord Jesus, I want to thank you so much that you love us, that you presence yourself with us. Lord Jesus, your word tells us that whoever lives in love lives in God and us in him. I want to thank you, Lord God, that you are for us, you are with us, that you are the Lord God Almighty. God, your presence is with us here today. And I thank you, God, as you presence yourself with us. Lord Jesus, we're just going to know the power of God moving. We give you thanks for this wonderful day. We are thankful for today because the Lord God is with us. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all that you're going to do during our meeting and our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's stand together and let's get ready to praise God. The King of love, my shepherd is Whose good is there but never And nothing lack if I am his And he is mine forever Streams of living water flow My ransomed soul he leadeth And where the verdant pastures grow Love my 
Good morning children and welcome to Destiny Kids Corner. The story today is The Twelve Spies from Numbers 13. Finally, the Israelites arrived near the Promised Land. God told Moses to send spies there. Moses picked 12 men, he told them. Find out what the people are like, see if the land is good. The spies returned and said, the land is beautiful. It is filled with plenty of food but the people there are big and strong. Joshua and Caleb said, Do not worry, God has promised us this land. He will give it to us. The rest of the Israelites did not agree with Joshua and Caleb. Then God said to Moses, The people do not have faith in me. They cannot enter the land. So for the next 40 years, God's people wandered in the desert. Hi everyone, hope everyone's keeping safe and well. Before I go, I'd like to say a prayer. Hold my hand, God, lead the way. Help me to be good every day. Let me know what's wrong and right. Keep me safe day and night. Let me know what you have planned. Lead the way, God. Hold my hand. Bye. This old friend of mine, Helen. My best friend. My friend called and invited me to try Alpha. Y recuerdo que mi papá me dijo, mira, hay comida gratis, ve. They handed me a invitation. It was just a random invitation. And I said like, why not, why not, let's try it. Why not, let's go. And I found like a, like a really awesome community of people. They helped me find who I was just by listening. Alpha helped me in the knowing of God. Empecé a entender que el amor de muchas maneras. I just knew. I was a different person from that moment on. I knew I had purpose. I, I felt really comfortable and like starting to invite my friends. I've seen Alpha really impact people that I work with. I would definitely encourage people to get involved. It's one of the coolest things I've ever experienced. It all turned out to be life changing. Good morning. We're coming to our time. We, we're going to give and we're going to bring in our tithes and give our offerings this morning. And I want to read to you this passage from Romans 12, verse 1. It says this, Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. You know, when we give, we're not just giving money. We're giving because our heart is for God and our heart is going for God. So we're going to give today. We're going to give with hearts that are grateful for God, for his mercy, for his grace towards us. We're going to give because God has given to us. So let's give together today. Amen. Let's just pray. Father, I want to thank you for everything that you've given to us. I want to thank you that you've given us life, you've given us fullness, that you've given us your mercy and your grace. And today we want to give out of an overflow of what you've given to us. Help bless us today as we give. In Jesus' name, amen. If you want information about how to give, it will be on the screen for you just now. Thank you.
today we're starting a new series and we're looking at the book of 1 Peter in the New Testament. This is written by the Apostle Peter who was uh, writing to the churches and Jesus described him as the rock on which he would build his church. So Peter has got a lot to say to help us and to help build our Christian lives up. So I'm going to read the first chapter out to us. It says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, strangers in the world, scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia, who've been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to, for obedience to Jesus Christ and sprinkled by his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is already revealed in this last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer griefs of all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. When Peter wrote, commentators have said this about this book, that it's like a letter of hope. Did you see the, did you feel the hope that's contained in here? So here's what we're going to look at today. Here's the first thing. In verse 3, it's, it, Peter talked about a living hope. When you're born again, you have a living hope. What does that mean? Well, you see, every other religion in the world is based on a dead person, a dead man. But Jesus is unique. Christianity is unique in that our Faith is based on a resurrected man, a man who was dead but has come alive again, and that gives us a living hope. You see, we are filled with hope when we look at Jesus because it shows us that here is a man who conquered death. Now, this living hope is written about by Peter. Can you remember Peter when it came to the crucifixion? Peter denied Jesus three times in the night, even before the cock crowed to, on the day of his crucifixion on Good Friday. Peter denied him three times. I never knew this. He denied him with cursing. And yet he was the one who ran to the tomb on that first day of the week, on the, on the Sunday, and saw with his own eyes the grave clothes with Jesus resurrected out of them like the the clothes of a cocoon the the face covering f neatly folded where the head should have been and the tomb sealed with a Roman seal just to break that seal would be a, a total death sentence and yet the soldiers scattered the angel rolled the stone away and the testimony of those uh, women who said we've met Jesus he's alive and then of course Peter himself met Jesus on the shores of Lake Galilee and while he was fishing uh, that stranger called out from the shore if he caught anything and they said no we fished all night and they suddenly realized he when Jesus said 
put down your net for another catch and they caught that prime number of fish, 157 fish. Uh, then, and Peter realised it was him and he jumped into, dived into the sea, swam over to meet his Lord and Saviour. You see, Peter knew the risen Jesus. He had a living hope. And our faith is based on a living person. All those early believers were Jews and the Jewish people celebrated faithfully the Sabbath. As we know, our calendar or, and, our, and our years are broken down into BC and AD. So before Christ and Anno Domini in the year of our Lord, this is the year of God 2020. But here's an amazing thing. Those early Jewish believers changed their Sabbath day to the first day of the week because they realised that was the most important day. It was the day when Jesus came alive again. You see, Jesus not only changes the year, he changes the day. He changes the day in your life so that it's a day full of hope. He changes the day in your life so that that living hope is bubbling over and active. And so when we put our faith in Jesus, we have a living hope that sees us through life. This week, there's been all kinds of news flying around about our current pandemic. But I want to say this, there we have a living hope and we're, we're not wishful thinkers, but we're faith-filled, hopeful people, because we are hoping in our living Lord to see us through life. And so that's what I want us to remember this morning from uh, 1 Peter. We have a living hope. Here's the second thing. Uh, in verse 4, Peter talks about an imperishable inheritance. You see, our faith and our hope is imperishable and he contrasts it with gold. Can you imagine if you were, suppose there was like a Marie Celeste pirate ship and it was drifting through the ocean and you, you clambered on board and uh, because there was no one on the ship and it was full of pirate gold, you were able to fill your arms with gold. Suddenly you find that ship sinking. What would you do? jump overboard with the gold? Of course you wouldn't. You'd throw down that gold, jump overboard and swim to save yourself so that you didn't go down with the ship. You see, that's exactly what our faith is like. We have an imperishable faith and death won't kill our faith, but we will live forever. And in fact, when you th compare what we have in our lives and what our hope is about, it makes us realise that we have something imperishable. You cannot take gold beyond the grave. And this is the reason I believe that is the case, is you don't need to. He saw city in Revelation chapter 21, verse 18, that was made of pure gold. And, it, and then in verse 21, it says, the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Each gate was made with a single pearl, the great street of the city. So for us, that would be like Northumberland Street. The great street of the city, or you could even say the A1. The great street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. You see, we don't need to take any gold to heaven because the place is made of gold. It's dripping with gold. Heaven is so prosperous that for paving stones, they use gold. You see, that is the imperishable uh, faith that we have and inheritance that we have. We have an imperishable inheritance. And it's not going to fade. It's not going to disappear. It's only going to grow and increase as we add to our inheritance by following the Lord and... Uh, inputting our faith and our hope and our giving into heaven's bank so that we enjoy 
the reward of our faith right the way through eternity. Isn't that amazing? And so the third thing that Peter talks about in verse 5, he says there's a protecting power at work. It says in 1 Peter 1 verse 5, who through faith are shielded by God's power. Shielding was God's idea. Whether you're at home today or you're going to join us, uh, you're joining us today in our live service, either way round, we're shielded by God's favour. And his favour surrounds us like a shield. It protects us. It protects us from the onslaught of this virus. It protects us from illness. It protects us from uh, the the winds, uh, uh, the the cold and bitter winds of the economy and that that uncertainty. You see, the Bible talks about this. We have an anchor that keeps the soul, and it's and it goes beyond the veil. It goes right into God's presence, and our hope and our faith is anchored there with God, and we know that we can draw on God and know his protecting power at work in our lives. So how do we apply this to our lives? Here's the first thing, we need to live hopefully. We've got to get up in the morning hopeful. We, we've got to be hopeful of a great day because we have a living hope. In fact, Peter, something like five times in this letter, mentions the hope we have. And Paul uses the same word. He says these three things remain faith, hope and love and the greatest of them is love but faith and hope are also very important. You see if you're f hopeful you're seeing beyond the current circumstance. You've got a an expectation of good coming towards you and it's like a magnetic thing. It draws in the goodness of God. At the minute we're seeing God's favour work in amazing ways. Um, already in the last three weeks, we've been given as a church over 750 eggs, fresh free range eggs from a local farmer who can't use them at the minute, uh, but is giving them to us as a church. And we're getting them round to as many people as we can. I hope you've managed to have some. We're giving away to neighbours and friends and people, uh, anyone we can bless with these things because it's great to be a blessing. Isn't that amazing? And already that favour is flowing and touching and blessing lives. And so God wants us to live hopeful. He wants us to secondly, enjoy our inheritance. You see, if you knew that you had an inheritance coming, you'd be full of hope, wouldn't you? And full of joy and expectation. This week, uh, I had a birthday and one of the pleasures of having a birthday is getting a birthday present or maybe two or three and you don't say in the time coming up to your birthday well I hate birthdays I've not even had a present yet no because you're expecting it on your birthday the, the day we fully receive our inheritance is that day we step into heaven but God is so good that even before we get to heaven, as we live hopefully, we can still receive our inheritance early. We can still receive his goodness and his grace even day by day because our eternal life has actually already started. You see, although it's completed in the day of our salvation, it begins when we ask Jesus into our lives. That's why Christians are so full of hope and so full of joy, because we're living in our inheritance already. Live in your inheritance. Here's the third thing. Call on God for his protecting power. It's great to know, isn't it, that we're shielded by faith. We're shielded by hope. We're shielded. We're under God's protective shield. He wants to protect and bless our lives. I want to thank God that even though some people have had COVID in the church, not one person has been affected uh, by it to death. And we've got many different people, some in, in quite vulnerable age groups, 
and, and circumstances. But I'm saying this to you. You are safe under God's protective care. That's my hope and that's my faith that his shield will be our, a, a, a shield to us from any circumstance that might try and rob us. You know, some people have lost their jobs during this pandemic, but God has already immediately provided them and some of them are better jobs than they were doing. You see, God wants to bless our lives. He wants to bless you today. He wants to fill your life with hope because he's coming through for you. And Peter wrote this because he was writing to God's chosen people. I want to leave you with this last thought. God chose you. He chose you before time began. And he made a choice that you could choose him. The miraculous thing about that is it goes against our tendency. You see, our tendency is to go towards sin and go towards the wrong thing. But God, even though that's our tendency due to our sinful nature, somehow God has called us and enabled us to choose him. Isn't that amazing? You see, you may not even know God today, but he's still calling you. Why? Because he's calling you through the ages. He's calling you from the beginning of time. He's calling you from the end of time. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And he has made all things good for us. You see, when there's a calling on your life, you have a strong sense that there must be more to life than this. You have a sense that you need to put your life right with God. You have a sense that if if I don't do this, I'm, gonna, I'm risking my eternal life. I'm risking my eternal destiny. And I'd be foolish to throw my life away like that. And so I want to end this morning by praying for you if you're in that situation. Uh, come on, pray with me just now. Pray these words in your heart and ask God to save you. God, I'm sorry for my sin. God, I don't want to throw away my eternal destiny. I realise I need a living hope in Jesus Christ. God, thank you that you died for me. Thank you gave your life for me. God, I accept your life. I give you my sins. I give you my mess ups. I turn away from my sinful life and I live for you. God, come into my life right now in Jesus' name. Amen. If that's you, you've just become born again, the Bible says, and it will change your life, not just for now, but for eternity. Let us know if that's happened. We'd love to pray with you and help you in any way we can. Here's the second thing I want to pray for. Maybe the flood of bad news is starting to overwhelm you. God is saying, come on, Pick up your hope, stir up your hope, realize that you're shielded by his protective power, that you've got an inheritance, and most of all, that you have a living hope in Christ Jesus. God, we want to thank you that we're on the winning side. We are not going to be overcome by bad news, but we are going to overcome the bad with your good news. Thank you, God, that you're with us, you're for us, you're going to help us live right the way through the forthcoming period so that we can know your protective power, your overcoming goodness and your living hope in our lives. And so God, we look to you with expectation and hope in Jesus' name. Amen.
all our praises. We lift you up. We lift you up. We lift you up on our praises.